Brendan O'Neill, what's happened to our hippies? <laughs> the hippies have lost the plot. You know, I, I love Neil Young in particular. I like Joni Mitchell too. These were people who in the 60s and 70s were spreading great music and also a message of peace, love and freedom. And now you fast forward 50 years and they're actually calling on a huge corporation, in this case, Spotify, to silence a man they don't like. So the great heroes of Woodstock have become agitators for capitalist censorship. They want the man to crush uh, uh, alternative ways of thinking and alternative ways of speaking. And what a sad end to hippiedom that really is. Well, especially see Neil Young, you know, he even did free speech tours, didn't he? He did, and he had a song rocking across the free world. You know, this is someone who, Neil Young in particular, was interested in freedom for most of his career. He had a great song in 1970 called Ohio, which was about the Kent State University massacre when four students were killed for protesting against the Vietnam War. And it was a great rebel song, and it was banned on numerous radio stations in the United States in 1970 for being too radical. And he turned to the cause of freedom of speech. He said that freedom of speech was the most important cause. And then in 2006, he went on the freedom of speech tour. And now you have Neil Young calling on Spotify, to essentially giving them an ultimatum. Either you silence uh, Joe Rogan or I'm leaving. So the hippie really has become the stiff and he's actually now demanding capitalist censorship of controversial people. It's slightly ironic, isn't it? Because if I, if I remember rightly, you know, Neil Young, a, a few years back, was spreading what he might describe as uh, misinformation about genetically engineered crops and food, because he, he didn't like that. And a lot of the things that he was putting out there were not exactly proven. But Brendan O'Neill, I was completely fine with that. It, it, was, it was his opinion. But it's odd, isn't it, that, that it's OK when it's his opinion, but it's not OK when Joe Rogan is hosting experts like uh, Dr Robert Malone, who I understand is a controversial figure. I've had him on the show. But whether you like him or not, he's one of the blokes who helped invent mRNA vaccinations. And without him and without his work, we might not have the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Yeah, you know, Neil Young is a bit of a hypocrite, to be honest, because, as you say, he, he did a whole album of songs about GMOs, genetically modified organisms, GM food, in which he promoted completely anti-scientific nonsense about that great development. So, you know, that's one problem with hippies. They go too far down the green route and they end up spouting anti-scientific claptrap, really. So he's a hypocrite now for saying that Joe Rogan is anti-science. But also, the thing is, if, if we censor... Uh, misinformation about COVID vaccines. I think there's there's two problems with that. Firstly, we make it seem like the COVID vaccination program is something that we need to be defensive about. I don't think we should be defensive about it. I think it's a great program. It's very safe and it's it saved a lot of people's lives. And also, it gives the anti-vaxxers, it makes them feel like martyrs. I bet there are lots of anti-vaxxers around right now looking at the pylon against Joe Rogan and thinking to themselves, see, we were right all along. They've got something to hide. There's something going on behind the scenes. We knew that we were right. So it's the worst of both worlds when you censor these kinds of discussions. And I think Joe Rogan is absolutely right to want to have honest, open discussions with all sorts of people.